All right, so this is our last section in our log chapter. And really what we're doing here is just learning two skills that are kind of small enough that they weren't good enough for like a section on their, on their own. So it's two little topics that semi-relate to each other. For our do now today, uh, I want to remind you guys of something we did back in lesson 5-6 which was learning how to solve an exponential equation like this using logs. If you look back at these notes, I showed you two different ways you could solve a problem like this. One option that we talked about was doing a log with a matching base of this number right here to both sides. So I could just do log base six of both sides. These would cancel each other out and we would end up with x equals log base six of 500. And if you type that guy in the calculator, you should get 3.47 for your answer. So this is one way that I taught you to solve an exponential equation. You do whatever base is under the exponent to both sides. But I also showed you a second way to solve log problems and it involved using just the common log. So a log base 10 on both sides. If you do it this way with the log base 10, what we had to do, these don't cancel right away. You have to take your exponents and you have to drag them to the front and multiply. So I end up with x times log 6 equals log 500. And then if you solve this, you would end up dividing by log 6 to both sides. So you get x equals log of 500 divided by log of six, which if you type that in the calculator or Google or whatever, you should get that exact same answer. This second option is what I had to do when I was in high school because we didn't have a calculator that could do like a base six. You only had the option for a regular common log. This way is a lot more popular now and easier, I think, just because you have that flexibility, but this also gets you the same answer. Now we did this before, but what I wanna point out right here in solving this problem two ways, we have two quantities that I'm gonna box in right here. This guy, log base six of 500, and this guy right here with my fraction. If I can solve the problem either way and they give me the same decimal, that must mean that this thing in the box is equal to this thing in the box over here. And this is basically illustrating a really important formula uh, that you can use with logs called the change of base formula. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit here and then we're, I'm going to point out what this actually means. So if you have log base A of B, A and B are just random numbers, you are allowed to convert this into a fraction with a different base. On my fraction right here, I brought in a new letter C that I didn't have in my original problem. And um, I'll show you how that works on my example up here. I started out with log base 6 of 500. That's like my left side. So my 6 is like my A, my 500 is like my B. And this converted into log 500 over log 6. So I basically took my problem that was originally base 6, and I chose to rewrite it, so my C that I chose was a base 10. You bring in a new base, the inside goes to the top of the fraction, the old base goes to the denominator, and a little phrase you can use to remember this and keep this straight, because this does look weird. I'm guessing right now, just in the video, you're probably still a little confused on how this works. It's not hard to execute, but it's a lot easier if you remember this phrase, the base goes in the basement. I'll show you what that means in an example uh, below. So the base goes in the basement is the thing you should remember for our change of base formula. So the change of base formula allows you to manipulate logs and put them in whatever base you feel like. They say on this first problem, for whatever reason, they want it in base seven. So I'm gonna rewrite this single log as a fraction. And my new base, my C for this, is gonna be base seven, because that's what they told me to do in the instructions. The most, most of the time if you use this, you're gonna put them in base 10, because base 10 is just so easy to work with, but they specifically said base seven right here. My old inside goes to the top, and my base on my original log goes to the basement, 
and it ends up being the inside of my denominator. This blue quantity is equal to this original one. It's just a different way of writing it that's now in base 7. All right, so you will see this more frequently in the other direction. Um, we talked earlier on in this chapter about what happens when you add two logs or when you subtract two logs. But we talked about how division or multiplication with logs we didn't have a rule for back then. Turns out dividing logs can actually happen. And what happens is it's just using this little formula, but in reverse. So my original base is 10 on both of these logs. That's going to end up going away when I divide these. The old base doesn't matter anymore. My new base is going to be what was in the basement. I have a 22 down there. And my numerator is going to be my new inside. So this is equivalent to this. It's a weird formula, um, and we can kind of see why it works through my example up here, but it's probably something that you basically just practice and memorize until it becomes um, easy to work with. And we have one more problem in this video. Again, when you divide two logs, the old base goes away. The base is going to change. Denominator basement turns into my new base. So I'm going to have a log base 7, and my numerator is my new inside. This is equivalent to these.